Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be checking out some new equipment. We're going to be replacing my internet switch. I'll explain that in a second. We got a new Microtech switch here. We got a new DAC cable, which I say new DAC cable looks used, but uh, we'll see about that. Let's get started. All right, so let me explain a little more about the internet switch. I'm going to show some other shots here, but basically I have a switch in my server rack in my MDF that basically takes the connection in from my ISP's fiber ONT. And it basically splits it off because I have a couple of static IPs, I have a couple of dynamic IPs, and that switch kind of does all of that. The only thing I don't like is that it's an unmanaged switch, meaning I have no monitoring or any kind of information like that. So if I do a speed test, I have no idea if another network is using all of the bandwidth or whatever the case may be. Let's take a look at the switch. This is a Microtech hex switch. Um, I'm not sure if this is a specific model. It says series, but... I don't know of any other Hex products. So let's take a look at this here. This is the usual Microtech experience. Open this up, get a quick start guide, the power supply, and then the switch. Another reason this is better than the unmanaged switch I have currently is because this actually has a SFP port. Now it's not SFP plus, so I had to buy a different DAT cable, but this switch will be able to do all of my normal connections that I would have. So I have the input and then I have four extra devices that connect to it. But through the SFP port, I can connect this switch to my management network. I can also have a tunnel, basically, of the VLAN. I can pass VLAN 4 or something from this thing, and I can then pull VLAN 4, which is the internet. I can then pull that into other devices, whether they're in my office over here, or if they're somewhere else um, in the building, I can then pull that VLAN and get a public IP address from anywhere. And this will be in charge of routing all of that and keeping it somewhat separate from the rest of my network, but still connected enough that I can still use that VLAN for. So this is the DAC cable. The reason I said it does not look new is because normally when I get this green packaging from Amazon, uh, usually it's actually a used product. So we're gonna open this up and make sure it's not used. Although a lot of times it's really hard to tell, but um, I mean, it looks new to me, I guess, but um, I'm always really skeptical of these. A lot of these too, I've had, they just don't work at all. Um, when they're in this kind of ready to ship packaging. So I'm just gonna hope that this is good to go. Um, I mean, it looks fine to me at first glance, but um, I'm honestly not sure. It's likely that it's also been like returned or something, which is why it's in this packaging. I don't know, but um, we'll have to take a look at that later. Like I said, this is the Microtech router board um, hex switch. I don't know the specific model. It looks like it's the hex S switch. So yeah, this also does uh, pass a PoE in. Um, that's the other thing I don't necessarily like about Microtech as much um, compared to something like Ubiquity. A lot of their products, they have um, PoE in, but it is all 24 volt PoE. It's, an, uh, it's called passive PoE, and it's not the standard PoE that like automatically negotiates with the device. So I'll show you an example here, but basically, basically that means that the 24 volts is always running no matter if a device is connected or not. And that also means that if you were to plug in a device that does not support 24 volts, you're actually injecting 24 volts into it and that can possibly damage your device. So I obviously don't like that because it's a lot easier to have passive, it's a lot easier to have standard PoE instead because it negotiates, it figures it out for you. That way you don't have to. So I'm going to real quick plug this in to port one. And obviously this does support standard PoE, which is actually amazing because that means it negotiates negotiated with my switch and it's ready to go. And as you could hear there, there's the Microtech boot sound, which sounds like it's completely broken, but it is pretty normal from what I can tell. And yeah, let's go set this thing up and we will go get it installed. Real quick as well, I forgot to mention, but this does have a mode button on the side as well as a USB reset and micro SD card slot. There's nothing on the back or the other side. And then the other way to power it is over this power input jack right here, the barrel jack that it came with. As you can see, it came with that barrel right there. So you can either power it through PoE or through that, or if the voltages are the same, you can actually do both at the same time and have redundant power supplies, which I really do like about Microtech. If there's multiple ways to power it, you can use multiple at once to get a more redundant power source to your switch. Yeah, let's go get this thing installed. We'll get it set up here. I'm gonna first put these things in my inventory software. Uh, and we will go from there. All right, so I've successfully gotten the switch installed. As you can see right here, we have the SFP uplink right over here to my core switch. We then have some ethernet connections. One's from the ONT from my fiber provider. The second one is for one of my routers. Uh, that fourth one there is for my UDM. Not sure what the third one's for. Uh, and then that fifth one right there is going over here and back and through to the back of the UXG light that I'm still testing out 
So it has been working out pretty well. I've had this plugged in and running for a few days now. And I'm gonna show you some of the graphs that I can get from it to see my internet bandwidth usage. Okay guys, so this is the total internet throughput right here on this graph. So as you can see, I am typically not using much bandwidth at all. Um, I'm only like, they're peaked at 83 megabits per second. Uh, we got 170 kilobits per second. So on average, I'm really not using much bandwidth at all, actually. Um, and that's been really surprising for me to see because a lot of the times my internet is slow and I don't know why. So I assume it's because I'm using a lot of bandwidth on another router. Um, but this actually shows me that I'm not actually using the bandwidth. So the issue lies with the internet provider or something else like that. Here's my UDM Pro. This is my main router. If you don't know what the UDM Pro is, it's that device right there, that rack mount ubiquity router, uh, cloud key, all kinds of stuff built into it. Uh, right here is the UXG Lite. Like I said, I'm still testing it. Um, this graph looks a lot bigger because um, it does not use much bandwidth at all. As you can see, that's kilobits per second right there. So um, it kind of stretches it out to fill the graph. Um, up here, I actually do not know what it is. Let's check. Okay, so that's my OpenSense network right there. Um, that is my basically a virtualized router I have for all of my production stuff. Uh, this has a static IP address for my fiber provider. So as you can see, we are pulling a lot more bandwidth on that one than I am here on the UDM Pro. Uh, here's the bridge. From what I understand, this is actually like inner VLAN traffic, which should not be happening at all because the VLAN I have all of this stuff on is completely separate. So I'm not sure what this bridge traffic's from. If you know, leave a comment down below. I'd be curious to know. This is the management network. Obviously it's not using much. It's using about 20 kilobits per second because it needs to upload all of this data to my server to process it. Uh, but beyond that, as you can see, here's more data that I can see. Uh, I obviously do not want to show too much on this screen, but um, uptime, as you can see, is 3.2 days. And this is the total traffic through the device. So, um, so yeah, that's really cool. PoE status is disabled. This actually does have a PoE pass-through port, which is absolutely sick. So I'm gonna show you that here in a second, but let's go check out the device. Okay, so here it is. As you can see, we do have a PoE out port. So if you're powering it over PoE, you can output PoE, or if you're powering it through this device or this power plug, which I am as well, you can actually do it through 24 or 48 volts, depending on if you want a PoE pass-through out of um, 8023AF or a T, I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but you theoretically do have both of those options depending on the voltage you power it with. Uh, and same for this jack, actually. You can power it through passive or active PoE, which is really cool. So let me show you a little bit of the configuration of this device. I'm not going to go into the settings of it. I'm just going to walk you through it here on this video. But basically, all of these ports 1 through 5 are all on the network or the VLAN that my fiber provider is on. So basically, one of those ports is the ONT, and then the other ones just split it off for the other devices. Uh, right here on this SIP, that just goes, like I said, to my core switch up there. And that basically just provides management of this device so I can see the visualization of data. Uh, and so I can uh, remotely, obviously, log in, do firmware updates, etc. Since this is a public-facing device, I need to make sure it's up-to-date with uh, firmware updates for security vulnerabilities and that kind of stuff as well. Uh, I also am passing the same VLAN through this port. That way, if I'm somewhere else in the building, I can access VLAN 4, I think it is. I can actually pull the public IP address and stuff uh, through VLAN 4. So no matter where I am, as long as it's connected to the core switch, I'll be able to access VLAN 4. And that goes the same for my Ubiquiti stuff. I believe VLAN 4 is routed on Ubiquiti as well, so I can actually use VLAN 4, which is really cool. So the next question you're probably asking yourself is, should you buy this for a similar uh, application? And I would say no. Um, as much as I do like Microtik and I do like this device, I don't think it's fit for most people because, first of all, it took like three or four hours to set up, which was absolutely absurd. Um, I'm not sure why it took so long for me to set up. I, I kept having to wipe it and um, just completely restart the setup, which is really annoying. But besides the setup process of it, there's a lot of things too. Like I'm only getting 900 meg here and 250 down. Now, obviously this is not due to the Microtik switch that I have. This is also due to my internet connection being kind of crappy. I feel like my fiber provider obviously does not give me a lot of bandwidth. Um, I know they're very new and they're still improving their back end systems, but um, this does just kind of show that my one gig connection is probably not a one gig connection uh, in the grand scheme of things. But aside from that, I also don't necessarily like the PoE port. As nice as it is, there's only one port and it doesn't do much power. I think it's only half an amp. So you can really only power a single device. Like you can't pass this on to a different switch and then power something else. Like you can really only just power like one device really from that, even if you split the signal. So. Overall, for like 50 or 75 bucks, it's not a bad deal at all. Um, it's If you need a router, this does routing as well. This does firewalling, it does all of that. So if you wanna use it for that, it's probably a good application of that device, but 
um, for what I'm using it for, I would probably get something different in the future. I apologize for just yapping for the past like five minutes. Um, hopefully I can chop that down a little bit. Uh, I did want to show you though, this project I'm about to start. Uh, by the time you're seeing this video you're watching now, this would have already been out, but I do want you to go check out this video. It's really cool. I uh, worked with PCB way on this one and I made a large LED wall. Well, I don't see an LED wall yet, but if you watch the video, you'll see it. So I'm gonna go build an LED wall. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.